I usually start at this point just to record our solidarity really with everyone in the health sector who's caring for people with COVID or who are looking after family members who might have had COVID or who have been affected in, in some way. And for those of you who haven't been able to be working in the health service, you know, that you're still valued, you're still there and you're still important. Um, and also a real big thank you to all the NHS and the key workers and their families because everyone is contributing at the moment. And I think what's been very interesting for me this week is the discussions around the key workers and how they perhaps aren't the people we thought they were before this um, emergency and, and crisis because, you know, everyone from the people who are providing food in the shops, the lorry drivers, the rubbish collectors, the postman, all of those people are key. So it kind of makes you think, actually, just about everybody in the in the community is a key worker. I'll pop that into you to think about. Anyway, I've got some little news. I'm expected to have a little news snippet. Right, the NHS has 72nd birthday on the 5th of July. And and there's various things that are going on at the on Twitter about whether there should be an applause or whether you should stop or and raise a glass or a cup of tea. I think what's important is we all celebrate in some way, whichever way is appropriate to us, to think about how precious our NHS is and how we want to retain all that is good in it and all look after all of the people who work in it, how they should be looked after. And on this issue around the, the COVID lockdown, it, as everybody will know, Leicester uh, have had a, a bit of a lockdown because they've had some um, increased rate of COVID uh, cases. And uh, interestingly, we were, we were due out to have our festival there in a couple of weeks, and our minds were very much on Leicester. So we're with you. Our solidarity is with you, Leicester because it's, a, it's very difficult psychologically to have to be unlocked and then locked up. But the, your time will come to be released from, from what you're being tied down for. Also, just to raise uh, awareness, there's new guidance from the RCM on face coverings for women during labour. Uh, and that's on, your, on the resource um, sheet that will be available online later. I wanted to also highlight the best tweet of the week that are that's my choice by the way there's lots and lots of lovely tweets and this was from Lee Abrigant highlighting corona babies which is a group of parents who've birthed over the last few lockdown months mm. very positive and I think at this sort of time it's very easy to get swamped with negativity and we need some positive as well but not just positive for the sake of positive but real positive materials and just to finish off the news snippets uh, Dr. Tracy Cooper has been appointed Regional Chief Midwife for North East in Yorkshire. And you'll remember if you've been joining us through these hours that Tracy joined us a couple of weeks ago and we're really pleased that she's been appointed. So having these Regional Chief Midwives is so important for midwifery, our profile and for maternity care generally. So that's fantastic. Well done, Tracy. Um, okay, so this in this programme, we're going to look at the effect of COVID-19 on maternity services and the effect on women's choices around birth. Plus, and that kind of brings in, I say plus a discussion, but really it brings to the fore midwifery units and midwifery-led units. Thanks for watching this video from the Maternity and Midwifery Forum. For more expert opinion and analysis, hit the button below to subscribe.